So um, detecting glyphosate in your urine is an important step to take in sorting out your health. And on momsacrossamerica.org, we do have labs, links to labs where you can do that. Now, we also found glyphosate in breast milk at levels up to 3,000 times higher than has been found to show sex hormone changes in animal studies. So very important to consider when, um, you, you know, if you have a loved one or a niece or a nephew or a child that has, you know, sex hormone changes going on, you know, what are they eating? Are they eating endocrine disrupting chemicals? Now, I want to point out on this map, it looks like most of the women did not have uh, glyphosate in their breast milk. And that is because nine out of 10 of these women were moms across America supporters, but that was the only way we could get them to send in their breast milk and spend $45 to FedEx their frozen breast milk in with, they, they, they trusted us and they knew uh, what our intention was. Um, but uh, one of them, the one that 99 parts per billion over there says she confessed to eating out at restaurants quite a bit, not organic, eating mostly organic at home. The other one, the 76 part per billion, the same thing. And the one that had the highest levels was a friend of a Moms Across America supporter. She did not, she was not aware of us. She did not know about GMOs. And coincidentally, she had the highest levels. Now, uh, since we did that testing, there has been uh, a widespread contamination, contamination of glyphosate discovered in foods all across the board. In fact, Canada, um, thanks to the work of Tony Mitra, a very um, a smart activist in Canada, got the Canadian Food Inspection Agency to test 7,800 food samples. And um, in the US, GMO Free USA tested, uh, Detox Project tested, Democracy Now! tested, um, I believe EWG tested as well, and Washington Perg, and of course, Moms Across America. We uh, exposed that there was glyphosate in wine and beer and orange juice and hummus and eggs and dairy and um, all kinds of organizations found that there were, was glyphosate in, in children's snacks. And down at the bottom, if you can't see those white objects, that is a sanitary pad, actually. Cotton has high levels, you know, non-organic cotton. And even gauze pads used in the hospital contain glyphosate. And that's this is not a good thing, folks, because again, it it kills off the beneficial bacteria and you, you want that beneficial bacteria when you're trying to heal. So keep in mind, all of these products that we tested were non-organic. There was a, few, there was one maybe organic wine that did show a tiny bit of contamination, but in general, the thousands and thousands of tests that have been done um, by mostly, mostly by, you know, um, consumer initiatives or prompted by consumer initiatives, uh, people like our moms and, and other groups, um, they, they have all shown that uh, non-organic food had thousands of times higher glyphosate than, uh, than organic food. So it's always better to eat organic. However, um, there is contamination and the detox project had show, has shown that glyphosate um, has, is you know, present in many different grocery store foods. 37 conventional foods were tested, 23 contain glyphosate, that's 62%. 26 non-GMO foods were tested. This is by the detox project, 18 tested positive and two of them had the top high, high top five highest levels and 23 organic foods were tested and five tested positive. So that's 21%. And, um, and, and I just want to say one more thing about this that I don't have the slide to show it, but they tested, um, protein powders. And that was the only time that I've seen that the level, the contamination of glyphosate in an organic product is, was the same as the conventional and the non-GMO product. So it was 54 parts per billion of glyphosate in the conventional protein powder, 54 parts per billion of glyphosate in the non-GMO protein powder, and 54 parts per billion of glyphosate in the organic protein powder. And I don't have the exact names of that protein powder, those protein powders right now, but you can look at the detox project if you want to see more about that. And what that shows us is that that was not just contamination of the, the organic product, that was fraud, okay? That what's happening there is, is that the soy or the peas or the lentils, some one of those types of uh, legume products that is very commonly found in uh, protein powders, which is predominantly imported from Turkey and from you know, the European countries, that product likely came over the, the sea and the ship 
as a conventional product. And then when it arrived in Long Beach, California, it was suddenly labeled as an organic product and worth $2 million more or something like that. Right. And this has been documented to be proven to happen that they come, comes from Turkey, you know, it's conventional ends up in the United States, all of a sudden it's magically organic. And so that means it's fraudulent. So if you want to avoid contamination of organic food, the number one thing to do is avoid highly processed foods like protein powders, protein bars, um, any of the um, quote unquote uh, organic, you know, um, vegan and vegetarian foods might be contaminated, right? So I would just eat whole, the, the, types, the types of foods that are very processed. So I would eat organic whole foods as much as possible in order to ensure that you're not eating contaminated organic food. Okay, so we also did some testing recently on our national school lunch uh, testing program during, you know, within this program, we tested 43 school lunch samples, thanks to our supporters and to Children's Health Defense, who also supported this project, and found 95.3% of these school lunches contained carcinogenic, endocrine disrupting, and liver disease causing glyphosate. That Now, this number is crazy high, folks, because uh, you know, what we just looked at in the, the grocery stores was that about 60% of the samples were positive. So our kids are clearly eating uh, much more uh, contaminated foods than what we're eating just in the regular grocery store. They are eating the worst of the worst food. Although we haven't tested military food yet. We haven't tested prison food yet. Um, if you know any millionaires that want to support us, we really would like to get that testing done. Uh, we also found 74% of the samples contained at least one of 29 different harmful pesticides that were detected in the food supply. Four veterinary drugs and hormones were found in nine school lunches at levels up to 130 parts per billion. And these are quite high that the, the technicians at the lab were shocked. They had never seen levels that high before in meat. This, this is veterinary drugs and hormones. And, um, and, and this is very disturbing. And later on, I think after I finish this presentation, I'll tell another story about these veterinary drugs and hormones. Um, we, we just have to know the entirety of what's going on in, in the food supply. Okay, so 100% of the school lunch samples contained heavy metals at levels up to 6,293 times higher than what the EPA allows in drinking water. Folks, that is criminal. This, this is completely unacceptable because heavy metals are proven neurotoxins, uh, and, and many of them stay in the body for the, the, the person's entire life, unless they do, you know, heavy detox chelation programs. They, they don't just easily, you know, a lot of pesticides can pass out of the body after a, a few weeks or a few days. Um, and I'm not saying they're not as harmful, but, uh, heavy metals are extremely detrimental and have been linked to autism and all kinds of learning disorders and learning disabilities. So this is an absolutely an un unacceptable result to be found in our, our children's school lunches. And of course, the majority of the samples were abysmally low in nutrients. And you know, given what I just said about chelation, that where glyphosate makes the vital nutrients unavailable to any living thing it touches, this would make sense. Okay, well, um, actually, oh, here. So I do have the slide on the 54 parts per billion, billion um, you can see here, it was Garden of Life, raw organic fit powder chocolate. Uh, it is supposed to be non-GMO and organic, and yet it was found to have 54 parts per billion uh, of glyphosate and Vega chocolate, uh, sorry, Vega, yeah, chocolate nutritional shake was the one that had um, 54 parts per billion. That was non-GMO. And then also um, around actually lower levels was the was the, uh, that was non-GMO. The conventional had 50 parts per billion. So that was um, good. I can't read the name there of that one, but that was found at Target. So you can see here that there's clearly some um, major fraudulent labeling going on in, in these processed, um, processed organic and non-GMO products. Although keep in mind, non-GMO GMO is not supposed to mean no glyphosate. It's just supposed to mean tested for GMOs and it has to contain less than 0.9% of GMOs. Okay. So non-GMO is not the first label I would go for. I would go for organic and non-GMO together in most cases, except for, you know, protein powders like this, I would just avoid it altogether. Keep in mind that apple cider vinegar, kombucha, and sauerkraut have been shown to break down glyphosate in the soil. So I incorporate that into my, those things into my daily diet, um, incorporate, you know, apple cider vinegar and salad dressing, kombucha, that's my evening drink. 
And uh, sauerkraut is something that I have a couple of times a week, along with food, especially along with meat to make sure that your body is able to break down and process those proteins. All right. So we also continue doing more testing. We found glyphosate in Pediasure feeding tube liquid up to um, 1110 times higher than has been shown to destroy gut bacteria in Carusco's study. And this is terrible because of course, when a, a, a baby is suffering from cancer, which is happening because there's so many toxins in our food supply and our water supply and pregnant mothers are contaminating their bodies with it unintentionally. Um, when this happens, it's destroying the baby's immune system right at a time when they're supposed to be fighting off cancer. So this is something that, uh, again, is, is so, um, incomprehensible that our senators and representatives and, um, regulatory agencies would allow this to happen. Now, since then, um, the Pediasure uh, people have uh, developed a non-GMO, um, a non-GMO liquid, uh, you know, feeding tube liquid. Uh, but um, I don't believe that we have since then tested it for glyphosate because I, again, I said non-GMO does not mean no glyphosate. There could still be glyphosate in there. And we would of course love to do more testing. We have done testing on five childhood vaccines that we sent in and all of them were positive for glyphosate. And now why would we send in child, childhood vaccines for glyphosate? Um, well, if you look at the ingredients in, GM, in, in of vaccines, excuse me, you will see that many of the uh, ingredients are derived from animals that most likely eat GMOs. For instance, chicken um, serum, bovine serum, which is cattle and pig tendons make up the gelatin in uh, vaccines that are the stabilizing agent, especially for live vaccines. Uh, so the problem with this is that the glyphosate that's on the grains that the animals eat, I believe I have a slide on this. Yes. Goes into, um, the pig tendons and the other animal, you know, the blood and the bone marrow and the, all of that. And especially the gelatin is ground up and made into, I mean, the pig tendons are ground up and made into gelatin and they end up in the vaccines, but you can see the vaccine ingredients listed down here on the bottom there's a lot of um, animal products in vaccines that are likely to be the uh, conduit for glyphosate, their GMO ingredients. So what are, the, what are the human implications of glyphosate exposure on such a systemic level? What I just showed to you is glyphosate is contaminating breast milk, urine, tap water, uh, all thousands of different kinds of foods vaccines, right. Of sanitary, pet, all these different bread, bread, milk, beer, wine, orange juice. Um, it's in the rain as well. You know, it's, it's, it's everywhere. So what are the, what are the, uh, what are the implications? Well, you probably have all heard that glyphosate causes cancer. This is uh, Lee Johnson, who was awarded $289 million by the jury. It was lowered to 80 million by the judge. I think in the end, he might've gotten 20 million, something like that, but it has helped him to be able to get cancer treatments and from what I hear now, he is doing much better. So that is good. Uh, the Pilioid couple uh, got a verdict for $2 billion. I don't know how, what that was lowered to, but I'm pretty sure they didn't get $2 billion, but they, they did get awarded that because both of them got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma from using Roundup. And uh, Bayer will pay out over $12 billion to over 144,000 plaintiffs. Mm -hmm.